When it comes to the sport of boxing, there have been many fighters that were considered as the greatest. Muhammad Ali is still referred to as the best boxer the world has ever seen, and for good reason. His speed was unlike anything the fans had seen in the heavyweight division. His mobility remained the same even after 12 whole rounds, and his chin was so strong that in his whole career, he was knocked out only four times. Floyd Mayweather mastered the art of boxing by adapting to every single opponent of his. His incredible defensive skills and the ability to counterpunch nearly every blow thrown at him is what made him reach 50 and 0 as a professional. But there was one man that everyone was afraid of. A true monster in the ring. A boxer that would send nearly every single opponent to sleep with one punch. He's allowing Mike Tyson to trap him in the corner. And that was none other than Mike Tyson. Tyson was feared inside and outside the ring because of his incredible strength and loose character. Mike, why do you have to talk like that? Well, I'm talking to you the way I want to talk to you. Do you have a problem? Turn off your station. You know what? I think we'll end the discussion right now. Then we could. You got it. Have a nice fight, Mike. Off. Today, we will look at Mike Tyson's most notable moments, which made him the person he was known for back in the day, and how he became a true champion in the eyes of the people. Welcome to Boxing Matrix. Enjoy this video. Two years after his professional debut in boxing, Mike Tyson would go on to have a shot at the WBC heavyweight title against Trevor Burbick. Trevor Burbick had beaten the great Muhammad Ali in 1981, giving Mike Tyson an additional reason to destroy him. When you fought him, was there any revenge? A hundred percent, yes, no doubt about it. <laughs> I was going to kill him. <laughs> you know, I know, so the way he beat, he was hitting Ali really hard with everything he had. Ali didn't have nothing left. He could have been, he was trying to kill him. Mm. I said, oh, I can't wait till I get him. Tyson dominated Burbick. He landed a four-punch combination on him near the end of the first round, sending him flying across the ring. Burbick managed to stay upright, but Tyson kept attacking, punching Burbick several more times until the bell rang. Tyson continued where he left off in round two, almost immediately hitting Burbick with a combination that knocked him out. Burbick, on the other hand, was unable to mount any attack and was constantly beaten by Tyson. In the second round, Tyson punched Burbick as hard as he could and brought the bout to a close. Mike Tyson was something the world had never seen. He had mastered the peekaboo style, 
a fighting style that was also used by the great Floyd Patterson in the 1950s. The power in his punches was unlike any of the other heavyweights. He even admitted one time that every punch thrown by him was thrown with bad intentions, with the intention to kill the other guy. Tyson was also a formidable defender. He would slip under and weave around his opponent's strikes while timing his own. Crouching immediately before delivering a hook or an uppercut was a big aspect of Tyson's explosive punching technique. In 1988, Tyson was set to face Larry Holmes, a fighter that had also beaten Ali while he was showing symptoms of Parkinson's in 1980. A 14-year-old Mike Tyson made a promise to Ali that when he would grow up and be a boxer, he would tear Holmes apart for him. Tyson kept his promise, and he completely embarrassed Holmes in the state of New Jersey. He was just too fast and too strong for the 38-year-old Larry Holmes to keep up. In the first rounds, Tyson was unleashing all of his power, while a scared Holmes was constantly trying to hold him. We expect to see a lot of this throughout the fight. Tyson showing no respect so far, pouring in the way he always does. Larry not on offense at all so far. Of course, this is the way you would expect to see Larry fight him and wonder if it will frustrate the younger Mike Tyson. Tyson doing a nice job in this big 24-foot ring, cutting Holmes off in the corner. Larry lashes up with a left hand and then ties him up. Man. This is exactly the way to throw Tyson off balance by shifting left and right and left and right. But the big question is how long can Larry Holmes keep going? Joe Cortez, the third man on the ring, the referee. Not a flush blow landed thus far in the fight. Larry Holmes really has only thrown about one or two punches so far. It's the first round. In the fourth round, Holmes got off to a good start, landing three left jabs on Tyson. Mike, on the other hand, continued to assault Holmes throughout the round, putting him up against the ropes and hitting him with a right hand to the side of his head. Following the heavy blow exchanges, Tyson became more violent, prompting Holmes to grab him twice more. Tyson attacked Holmes with a left jab right hand combination that dropped him to the ground. Tyson continued to punish Holmes with strong combinations until landing the decisive blow with seven seconds left in the round, a right hook that rocked Holmes for the third time in the round, prompting the referee to end the fight and award Tyson the technical knockout victory. And again, Larry knows how to tie him up. Larry Holmes 
could not continue that round after round. Oh, a big right hand, and down goes the former champion. He was there, right in the button. The count is up to six, seven, and eight. Now he is hurt. I don't know if he's going to be able to survive this round. He's definitely hurt. His legs are gone. And in comes Mike. It was a big right hand. Now he's down again. Down he goes. I don't know if he'll be able to continue. It's up to four and five. His eyes are clear. It's up to seven and eight. He's going to be able to continue. Tyson knows he has him in trouble. It's just a matter of time. Larry will not survive this round. He's trying to fight back with everything he has. He's trying desperately. But this is not the same age man that was able to do it against Ronaldo Spikes. He goes with a big right hand. The left hook. Now he stays on his feet. Showing tremendous heart. Nailed the left hook. Holmes is getting set up for the right hand. Here it comes. The left hook come inside. There's the left. There's the right. Now he's ready to go again. He's hit with the left hand. 17 seconds. He may be able to get by the round now. He should be hanging on. He's gonna hang on, but he'll stop the fight. Down he goes. Now he's hurt. It's all over. He is knocked out. Mike Tyson had conquered the world. He was the unified heavyweight champion and had a whopping score of 32 to 0 at only 22 years old. He went on to beat many more heavyweight champions, names like Frank Bruno and Carl Williams. But despite all the hard earned victories, Tyson had lost direction in his personal life, as he was frequently partying and spending his money on things he didn't need instead of focusing on his training. And because of that lifestyle, Tyson would soon face his first ever loss. In February of 1990, Mike Tyson would return to the ring to face Buster Douglas, a boxer that came into the fight as a huge underdog, with the odds being 42 to 1 in favor of Tyson. It was obvious from the start of the fight that Douglas was not intimidated by Tyson. Douglas surprised everyone by having a lot of spring in his body movement, and was not afraid to let his fists fly whenever he sensed an opportunity to strike Tyson. So well, I mean, he's really, I think the weight has made a difference in his upper body movement, in his legs. Look that jab out there. He wants to top Mike up every time Mike gets inside. And the problem a lot of fighters make is the fact that... Keep in mind that Carl Williams looked pretty loose and relaxed against Tyson until Tyson hit him with a body punch about 45 seconds into the bout. Mike has not yet gone to the body against Douglas here. Well, the left jab of Buster Douglas is incredible because he's one of the down with the left jab. So the left jab is the key weapon for Buster Douglas. He fought a sculpted Adonis named Mike Williams on the undercard of Tyson Spinks and floored him twice in the early rounds with the left jab. He used his quick and accurate jab to keep Tyson from getting inside, where he was the most dangerous. When Tyson tried to get inside, Douglas would tie him up, move away, or punch him many times as soon as he arrived inside Douglas's range. Douglas was more agile than Tyson early on, and he outlanded him in exchanges. Through a snappy looking right hand lead, and then tied up an on rushing Tyson. See, Mike has to be careful also because Mike's standing in front of him too. Couple of right hands by Douglas. Tyson landing the jab again, and Mike misses with the right. With total fun, the jab lands again for Tyson. He has not yet gone to the body. Against Frank Bruno, Tyson basically forgot Bruno's ribcage for the first four rounds and paid a bit of a price for it. Once he went to the body in round five, the fight was over pretty quickly. He does not allow Mike to work his body. He's trying to tie him up inside. In fact, he's doing a pretty good job here. Another right hand lead by Douglas, and Tyson lands the left hook. Douglas would still dominate the middle rounds, although Tyson managed to land a few of his signature uppercuts. Douglas accurate with the jab. That could be fatal. I'm surprised I don't see as many body shots thrown by Mike Tyson. That would bring those hands down of Buster Douglas. 
Right hand by Tyson, moving yeah. in behind the left hook. He landed that one under Douglas's chin, near the middle of the chest. Douglas with another right hand to the top of Tyson's head. Douglas's right jabs caused Tyson's left eye to swell, preventing him from seeing his opponent's punches well. Well, he, he's asking some questions of Tyson that Tyson hasn't been asked before. In the second half of a fight, he's got to come back and win it. Look at the punches. These right hand leads are not diminishing in effectiveness, guys. He is still landing just about all of them. Double jabs, lead off right hands. And now, Mike Tyson. Still beating Tyson to the punch, Ray. Well, there's just no question which is the more confident fighter now. You see how easily Douglas is dominating the action inside. And Tyson is holding up. Tyson, who had been backed onto the ropes, hit a powerful right uppercut that drove Douglas to the ground in the last 10 seconds of the eighth round. He's against the ropes. I've never seen it. And there's a right hand uppercut and down goes Douglas. As suddenly as that. But that was not the end for Douglas as he managed to get up on his feet. Confident. Got a little loosey-goosey. Still wobbly. Let's see what Mike can do to finish. And the bell ends to save Buster Douglas at the end of round eight. In the 10th round, Tyson was knocked out for the first time in his career after getting hit by four punches to the head. The referee counted the champion out when he attempted to get back to his feet. It's over. It's over. Mike Tyson has been knocked out. Unbelievable. And so Tyson had lost it all. Tyson describes his loss to Douglas as a lesson that he needed, a lesson that humbled him. Six years after facing his first loss and after being released from prison, Tyson would face Evander the Real Deal Holyfield in order to defend his WBA title. In the first rounds, Tyson was being aggressive, but the long-prepared Holyfield already knew what his game plan was. He was waiting for Tyson to throw punches in order to counterpunch him every single time. Throughout the rounds, Mike found himself being constantly outboxed by Evander. A punch from Holyfield sent Tyson staggering across the ring towards the end of the 10th round. Holyfield followed him into the ropes and fired a barrage of punches. Tyson was out on his feet and defenseless by the time the bell rang. 
but his corner let him out for the 11th. Tyson was sent back into the ropes when Holyfield landed another powerful extended combo, making the referee stop the fight and granting Holyfield the win. But Mike would soon find himself in the ring against the same opponent, as he wanted to take revenge for the embarrassing loss he had received. More and more people were starting to like Holyfield instead of Tyson because of his ability to deliver a boxing show while also being a strong personality outside the ring. In June 1997, one of the most notable boxing fights would take place. Tyson, now more ready than ever, was set on a mission to regain his WBA title as he had lost it to the same man in 1996. Evander, on the other hand, was as confident in the second fight as he was in the first one. His plan remained the same, and now that he had the experience of fighting Mike for the first time, he got even smarter in the way he would fight him the second time. Getty said he's gonna be bobbing, weaving, he's gonna be jabbing. Well, he certainly start out jabbing and then throw right afterwards, so Let's see if we see improvement in the offense of Mike Tyson. I think you can sense the amount of respect here too by both fighters. A wild swing and a miss with an overhand right by Tyson. It's interesting to see who's going to push you back. Jacati said, I'm going to let this guy get pushed back. Right now, off the side of Holyfield's head, an overhand right by Tyson. The punch by Evander Holyfield. As the third round was about to begin, Tyson came out of his corner without his mouthpiece but was soon instructed by the referee to insert it in his mouth. Tyson started punching as hard as he could, but Holyfield got him in a clinch. Tyson then rolled his head over Holyfield's shoulder and bit him on his right ear. What happened here? He got bit, I think. Evander Holyfield, look out, he's pushed right here. A good punch by Tyson. He got bit in the ear. Oh my goodness, he got a bloody right ear. Holyfield bit by a dirty by Tyson. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Well, first he had a parachute drop on him, now he had a heavyweight fight. Fight! I wonder if we can get that on tape. Fighting! After the ringside doctor determined that Holyfield was able to continue despite the bite, the referee announced that he would be deducting two points from Tyson. Minutes later, another clinch would happen between the two fighters, and Tyson would now bite his left ear. After the match was stopped, Tyson went on a rampage at Holyfield and his trainer while they were still in their corner. The referee disqualified Tyson and the ring was now full of security to protect Holyfield and to calm Tyson. This fight would go down in history as the bite fight, 
and Tyson was called the baddest man alive. He was uncontrollable, unpredictable, and full of ego. He did not care what the media were saying about him. The only things he cared about was conquering opponents and spending all of his money. And that's why Mike Tyson is the baddest man alive. This is Boxing Matrix. Thank you for watching.